Amid the rapid spread of coronavirus, businesses around the world are closing doors and government officials are telling people to stay home. Meanwhile, Amazon faces perhaps its biggest challenge yet. The pandemic has triggered a surge in online orders so big, it's hiring 100,000 new workers and halting the intake of any new inventory that isn't in high demand. And in many ways, Amazon is in a position of strength when you have a situation like this where consumers don't want to shop in traditional brick and mortar. More of them are going on to online channels like Amazon to buy products. And Amazon takes a piece of every single one of those sales. Long lines and empty shelves have prompted some grocery stores to limit food purchases, sending millions of shoppers online, where Amazon faces uncharted territory as it attempts to police its huge network of listings and sellers that's changing more rapidly than ever before. Amazon's got a monumental task in front of them. They need to protect buyers, but they also have to make sure that they're communicating effectively with sellers who may be listing items inappropriately. We wanted to find out how Amazon is handling the flurry of shoppers waiting for their orders and what the pandemic means for sellers with inventory stuck in China and for the warehouse workers and delivery drivers hustling to get Amazon packages out to those in need. In a blog post, Amazon warned that popular household items are running out of stock and some orders are facing delays. So although it's asked all employees to work from home if they can, its 110 U.S. fulfillment centers are largely still up and running, with most of its 250,000 U.S. warehouse employees working to get packages out without heavy delays. So if you're a warehouse employee for an Amazon facility, there is no work from home option. Fortunately, uh, they're in a situation where many of their warehouses are heavily reliant on robots. And so you need a whole lot fewer employees than you would think to run some of these warehouses. Still, Amazon is adding those 100,000 new employees to meet the surge in demand from people relying on Amazon's service during this stressful time. What happens if Amazon gets dis disrupted? What happens if Amazon can't you know, get their workers into the warehouses? A handful of warehouse workers have begun testing positive for coronavirus. Amazon temporarily closed one facility where there was a confirmed case in Queens, New York for additional cleaning and sent workers home with full pay. There are at least five confirmed cases among Amazon workers in Europe. Amazon is offering two weeks paid leave for hourly workers like them who are diagnosed or quarantined, and unlimited unpaid time off for hourly workers through the end of March. Still, hundreds of Amazon workers in France protested, asking for a halt in operations, and workers have circulated a petition calling for extra measures, like paid leave regardless of diagnosis, hazard pay for working on location, and a complete facility shutdown in the event a coworker tests positive. But Thompson says Amazon will still be able to get orders out even with some warehouses shut down. There are so many warehouses already in place, and Amazon has done such inventory balancing across those warehouses that let's say a warehouse burns down, or let's say everybody in the warehouse gets sick, Amazon can still move inventory around fairly quickly or already have it already in place elsewhere to ensure the customers get the products they want. Still, Amazon admitted that some of its delivery promises are longer than usual. There have been some delays because Amazon's trying to fight a multiple front war right now in terms of making sure that they can still do one day prime, they can get deliveries executed as quickly as if there were no crisis right now. Manpower might be limited based on some people calling in sick. To help speed up delivery for household staples, medical supplies, and other high demand products, Amazon is prioritizing space for these items in its warehouses. This means it's no longer accepting shipments in its warehouses of any other items from third-party sellers until April 5th. While Amazon prioritizes customer needs, sellers whose products are not household staples or medical supplies are facing huge losses. We have a lot of Western products, and our best-selling product is a children's pink cowboy boot. Jerry Kavesh has more than 15,000 items for sale on Amazon. He says this will halt more than 50% of his business, depending on his rate of sale and how long the moratorium lasts. For others, it means a total loss of work. It meant laying off employees. I mean, there's no work here if we can't send things out. So we've um, had four that had to lay off until Amazon opens back up. Crystal Graham runs a prep center where third-party sellers pay her team to package items in compliance with Amazon standards and ship them to Amazon warehouses. She estimates 95% of her business is currently at a standstill. The employees and everything, they're worried. They're all worried because, you know, if we close, 
there's nothing else here. If it continues, we will be forced to downsize back to one or two people. It could close our doors. Another prep center owner told CNBC her losses will be 100% until Amazon lifts a hold. Meanwhile, customers are having trouble getting orders from Amazon's usually rapid Prime Now service. It normally offers tens of thousands of items with free two-hour delivery, but many delivery time slots are unavailable. On Saturday, I ordered a Prime Now order at around noon, and it didn't get delivered until Sunday at 4 p.m. And normally, you can get things delivered within one to three hours in the Seattle area. An Amazon spokesperson told CNBC, we are experiencing an increase in demand for Prime Now and are working hard to increase delivery availability. Amazon Fresh, which usually offers grocery delivery from local Whole Foods stores within two hours, is highly delayed, with time slots in some regions not available until six days later. As customers experience delays, coronavirus is also wreaking havoc on the supply chain for third-party sellers because so many products come out of China. We have hundreds of clients and over 50% of them today are experiencing delays in replenishing inventory. Uh, we're seeing that so many companies really don't have a contingency plan in place. All they're sourcing it is out of one country. So it's unfortunate that we are so dependent on Chinese manufacturing. There's just a lot of uncertainty and fear about anything that's being sourced in China because China had to take such draconian measures to stop the spread of the coronavirus. And it worked to a large degree, but it seems like it's also causing a lot of problems and disruption in the supply chain. Bernie Thompson is one Amazon seller struggling with supply. Several of his items, including his second bestseller, are now out of stock. We were selling near to 3,000 units a month of that product, um, and now that supply has totally disappeared. Bernie Thompson's Pluggable Technologies has seen revenue growth every year since he founded it in 2009, until now. This year with coronavirus, we expect that we might not get our 11th year as, a, as an up year. Like many sellers, Thompson's inventory of 120 consumer electronics products is largely manufactured in China. But he says even those coming from Thailand and Taiwan are impacted. We're out of stock of five out of our 120 products right now, probably affecting you know, maybe uh, seven to eight percent of our revenue right now that we've lost. I think for anybody who's getting products out of China, uh, there will continue to be this problem. And quite frankly, unless companies are able to find secondary sources of supply very quickly, which is quite unrealistic, I think you're going to see some companies that have a very, very hard time uh, keeping things going. For the inventory he does still have, it's hard for Thompson to get it to customers because he's asked the majority of his 35 employees to work from home. We really try to do right by customers and, and try to create as much brand at attachment as we can through you know, great products, great support, great information about our products. Uh, but if they can't get the product, that's all, that's all kind of eliminated. For a lot of these companies, the out-of-stock situation is not just one or two days, it's a month, it's two months. And I've heard worst case situations where it could be as many as six months before some of these small private label sellers get back in stock. The Western wear sold by Jerry Kavesh is also largely manufactured in China. Product that we thought would be shipping two or three weeks ago, we're now being told may ship end of April, early May. And the issue they have is they don't know when their component suppliers are going to open up. It's a serious issue. You do not want to run out of stock on Amazon. You're punished severely by the algorithm. Amazon sent a notice to sellers advising them to cancel orders they're no longer able to fulfill and suggested putting their businesses in vacation status to protect their listings from being pushed lower in the rankings. If we go out of stock of a product, there's a hundred other brands, many of whom are Chinese brands, um, who are there with stock uh, behind us. Since 2013, we've gone from less than 1% of sellers on Amazon being Chinese sellers to now almost 48, 49% of sellers in the United States being China, China-based sellers. As U.S. sellers like Thompson begin to see their bottom line impacted by inventory shortages, customers are also feeling the squeeze. Some of the first items showing out of stock are products like disinfecting wipes, hand sanitizer, and toilet paper. In some cases, sellers who do still have these items in stock have turned to price gouging. Packs of Purell for $400, face masks for $300, toilet paper for $100, emergency for $90, and disinfecting wipes for $70. I believe that this is something that Amazon must act on quickly and decisively because it's damaging not only Amazon's reputation, it's damaging our reputation just by being there. Certainly with now over 300,000 sellers a year joining the marketplace, half of them coming out of China, 
that's a lot of sellers to be monitoring. Still, Amazon is coming down hard on these sellers, removing more than 530,000 listings and terminating more than 2,500 seller accounts. Amazon told CNBC its policy on fair pricing is longstanding and that there is no place for price gouging on Amazon. And we had the same situation when we had SARS a few years ago where certain types of health products are being sold for ridiculous amounts of money over and above what they might otherwise be sold for. The reality is Amazon is taking a lot of steps but there are 600 million products in the Amazon catalog. So even though Amazon removed, for example, a million products already to date, the fact is there, there's another, I'm sure, hundreds of thousands more that are being added regularly. In order to more easily police price gouging, Amazon is limiting the number of sellers who can offer affected products like face masks, hand sanitizer, and disinfecting wipes, although it won't remove existing listings unless they're in violation of the company's fair pricing policy. If a customer comes across price gouging, Amazon says to report it in the app or call customer service. We were critical of some of uh, how their platform was used and some of these products uh, that usuriously were priced. Uh, Amazon immediately got back to the state of California and are working cooperatively to go after those that are taking advantage of customers that utilize their platform. Overall, I think they're trying to do the right thing. They have already stated that they're working with law enforcement to try to hand over price gougers and people who are trying to profiteer off of the virus. Amazon removed items sold by this seller in Tennessee, who has more than 17,000 bottles of hand sanitizer left after stockpiling it before the crackdown. Amazon says it's deployed an additional dedicated team that's working 24 hours a day, seven days a week to search for, investigate, and remove offers for unfairly priced products majority of third-party sellers are trying to do the right thing. There's usually, depending on the situation, maybe 5% or less of sellers who are actually actively trying to do something that's, that's negative or in some way bad actor type behavior. With so many items coming directly from China, Amazon is also facing customer questions about contaminated packages. The reality is it's very unlikely to contract the virus from an Amazon package. Even if it came priority mail, it's going to be three or four days before it gets here. That's more than enough time for any challenges with, with a cough or a sneeze uh, carrying over to you, the customer, picking up the product and becoming infected. All you really need to do is make sure that you wash your hands as soon as you touch something that comes in from the outside anyway. The World Health Organization says it's safe to receive a package from China. The virus doesn't last long on objects like letters or packages. It also says the likelihood of an infected person contaminating commercial goods is low. To help curb the spread of the virus, Amazon has asked any of its contract flex delivery drivers who feel sick to stay home. Of course, people shouldn't work while they're sick, but if you are a, a contractor, you're not going to get paid unless you actually work. Contract workers driving for Lyft or Uber, meanwhile, are being offered up to 14 days of sick leave if they're diagnosed or quarantined. To help, Amazon is creating a $25 million relief fund for delivery drivers and seasonal employees, allowing them to apply for grants ranging from $400 to $5,000 if they're diagnosed with coronavirus. In addition, it's offering a $2 pay raise for all delivery and warehouse workers. This particular virus has caused everybody to reevaluate what does it mean in this country to, you know, pound it out and just keep going, even if you're sick, even if your nose is runny, just keep going to work. Well, that's not always necessarily the right idea. Another safety concern is false claims that certain items can prevent the spread of coronavirus. If you make a claim that something is supposed to cure or prevent or treat a disease, that you need some sort of laboratory proof or some sort of testing to show that that's actually the case. And if you don't have that proof, then you can't make that claim. And that's something that's actually mandated by the federal government. In 2011, Rachel Johnson Greer was in charge of finding products with unsupported claims like this for Amazon, which uses internal keyword searches to sniff them out. You have people who are saying Corona space virus or misspelling coronavirus, and so they have to come up with ways to find it when people are deliberately trying to game the system, because you do have people who are making claims that some sort of supplement can help boost your immune system and cure coronavirus or prevent you from getting coronavirus. Amazon says it's removed millions of products that make unsupported claims about coronavirus. In addition, Amazon has stopped allowing sellers to pay to be at the top of advertised listings when a customer searches the word coronavirus. It's also added a link to official information from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention to the top of any customer searches for coronavirus, COVID-19, N95 mask, and other coronavirus-related content. In another forward-facing response to the pandemic, Amazon is in talks with the Gates Foundation to help deliver free at-home testing kits in the Seattle area. 
It aims to process thousands of tests per day, keeping sick people out of doctor's offices where they could expose others. I think they will actually build trust because they're saying, hey, we recognize there's a problem. We're a very large marketplace. It is whack-a-mole, is, <laughs> um, but we as Amazon are doing everything we can to protect you, the consumer. They're marshalling as many resources to prevent any sort of uh, damage to their reputation as possible. Buyers need to buy with confidence. They need to know that Amazon's regulating their third-party sellers and the prices, and they certainly don't want expressions of outrage to be surfacing in public right now. While Amazon continues to push orders out amid the outbreak, questions remain about the long-term impact on the workers and sellers that fuel Amazon's massive marketplace. My concern as a seller is that some of the decisions that they make may not work at the lower levels because they do not necessarily understand how the unintended consequences are going to ripple through the selling community. So it's an unknown and unknowns are dangerous for all of us. Everybody needs to be worried about the economic effects because we've never had a supply disruption like this. This is like you know, a gigantic rock you know, landing in a small lake. We know the, the ripple effects are going to be big, we just don't know how big. Mm -hmm.